Welcome everyone. This will be your first session with Excel intro. Uh, it, today is September 9th and I'm going to show you some cursor movements and different positions on the screen. So first of all I'm going to go to view and we're going to make our screen just a little bit larger. So under view we want to click on the zoom button and now this is called a radio button click on the radio button in front of custom and you see that the amount 100 is highlighted. So type in 140 and you can adjust this accordingly and say OK. And now you see your screen has got larger. You could also have used the buttons down here to zoom your screen. So you can go and play with those, zoom it out or zoom it in right there at the bottom. This is called cell A1. This is the name box and the name box will show you um, where you are at. So if I click here, I'm at C5. If I click here, I'm at D2. If I go control home, as you know, it always takes you back to the beginning of your document, which in Excel is cell A1. All right, the next thing that I want to show you is that Excel um, knows the months of the year. They are pre-entered by uh, Excel, but you must type it in correctly. So if I type in January, and make sure you spell it right, J-A-N-U-A-R-Y, press enter, and now watch. If, and here, this cursor right here, this one is the big white cursor. This here is called your thin black crosshairs, the fill handle. And this is a four-headed arrow. Now, a four-headed arrow moves your work. Okay? You don't want to do that. So I went Control Z to undo. If I put my cursor here at the thin black crosshairs and I drag down, you can see that I go through the months of the year plus they will repeat. If I do this time, if I type in May, M-A-Y, and press Enter, take a look and I'll grab my fill handle and the months of the year will start at May. So wherever, whatever month you put in, that's what it starts at. Now if you put the months in, if I go to cell B1 and I type in, let's say, uh, APR for April, okay, press enter and now go back to cell B1, grab your fill handle and drag down and note that they all came in as abbreviations. But if I put in D1, if I typed in Lee, that's not a month of the year, and if I drag down, I get Lee, 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 exactly what I put in. Now, Excel also knows the days of the week, so if you put in Monday and press Enter, and now grab your fill handle and drag down, you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and you go through the days of the week. Now, here's another nice neat trick. If you type in, let's say, Friday, and you left double click now, left double click, and you see that you fill it in. And it fills in uh, uh, Friday right down to Thursday to match the longest line in your Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so I think you've got the handle on that, which is good. Now, the other thing you might say is that the text is wrapping. The, set, the columns are not wide enough. So watch. If I use the black down arrow, that selects one column. Now, there are 1,048,076 rows in one column. So many, many rows. And when you use the black down arrow, that highlights all the rows to the bottom. In other words, it highlights your one column, column A. All right, now put your cursor over here and you see a vertical bar, double-headed arrow. So left double click. And you see how now September fits within the column as does November. The column is as wide as the longest line. Now let's try it with column B. Select column B with your black down arrow, left double click, and there a column is very skinny because there's only three letters. Now look at column C, once again click, and now 
double click and you see that you've widened the column. All right, this time you don't have to highlight the column. Even if you're sitting in the column, all you have to do is left double click and you saw the column D size right down. Try it for column E, left double click and Wednesday now fits in. Try it with column F, left double click and it fits in. The next thing you might want to do, you said we did each column separately, but this time you want to do three columns. So let's click on letter A, hold down your shift key and click on the letter C. Now you have three columns selected. Put your cursor over here or it could be here or it could be here. But right now let's go here and now drag it to the right and watch the width. I'm at 14.3, I'm at 15, 17, 18. I'll stop about there, about 20. Now, do you see how wide I made all the columns? All right, I made them too wide. I can go here again and drag back maybe to 13. And then I say, oh no, I want them to all fit. I double click and they're all fitting the text of the longest line. All right, let's try it again. Let's highlight column D, hold down your shift key, click on the letter F. Now drag across and again go out to about 20. And now you can see the three columns. Once again, we'll drag it down. Let's drag it back to about, oh, 14 is good. And now you see you sized at 14 and then you said, oh no, I want to double click. And there I double clicked. So that's how you widen columns and then go control home and that takes you to the beginning of the spreadsheet. Now this time I want to work with numbers with you. So we're going to go to a new sheet. We're going to go here to the plus sign which says new sheet. So we're going to go to new sheet and one more time I want you to click on view, go to zoom and put it up to custom 140. All right, press enter. This time go to, oh, I'll say about C7. We'll put in a zero, press enter, put in five, press enter, put in 10, press enter. All right, we want to make a pattern here. So I'm going to click in the first cell at zero, hold down your shift key, and now click in C9. And you should see the white tells you that's the active cell. The shading tells you those cells were selected. All right, now we're going to go to our fill handle and as we drag down, do you see the pattern 15, 25, 30, 35, 40? Okay, now leave it highlighted and take your thin black crosshairs and drag right up to the top. And do you see minus 5, minus 10, minus 15? So you've got your positive and your negative numbers. All right, this time, let's go to D7 <coughs> and put in 5 and then press your right arrow and put in 10 and press enter. All right, one more time. Go to C7, hold down your shift key and click in E7. All right, take your fill handle and drag to the right. And we went up to 30. All right, now take your fill handle and drag back to the left. And now you see horizontally your numbers going to the right positive and your numbers going to the left negative. So pretty easy. All right, I wanna try one more thing with you. So let's put another new sheet in and note that it's sheet three. One more time, we're going to go to view, zoom and custom 140 and press enter. All right, this time we'll put in a pattern. I'll go 55, press my right arrow, 66, press my right arrow, 77, press my right arrow, 88. There's a pattern. So I'm going to click in cell A1, hold down your shift key, and click in cell D1. All right, let's drag to the right, and we should see 99, 110, 121, 132. All right, now I'm going to drag straight down. Oh, to about there is good. All right, now this time you say to me, I'd like you to add those all up. All right, go control home, click.
click and you're in cell A1. Hold down your shift key now and click in cell I10. And do you see the blank column? And you see the blank row. All right, go Alt equals. And there you have put your sums in. All right, we'll stop there. That's the end of that lesson for today. And thank you for watching.